Got a pretty large AMD update incoming for you folks. First off, this is from Video Cards. AMD Ryzen 5 7600X3D is just 8% slower than the 7800X3D in gaming, and it beats the 7900X3D and even the 9700X. And it has launched officially in Germany. This is... This must be the... Is this the same chip? That's a freaking Micro Center exclusive? I can't remember, man. It, it, the last few weeks have been a blur. I've had a lot going on in my personal life with, you know, getting glasses and all this stuff. But anyway, let's continue with this article. PC Games Hardware just received a sample of AMD's new 6-core processor this past Tuesday, and they wasted no time in testing the processor immediately upon its arrival. And thanks to that, we now have a first review of this new 3D VCAS SKU. Oh, that coffee's bothering my stomach. AMD announced that Ryzen 5 7600 X3D last week as an exclusive product for a single U.S. retailer. That's right, Micro Center. And boy, did they get buried. <laughs> if you want to see some of the greatest comments ever about this, uh, this launch, uh, go to the Tech Power Up forums. Uh, <laughs> commentary gold over there. AMD, yep, for the single U.S. retailer. However, that information wasn't entirely accurate as uh, AMD does plan to release this processor in other markets. Nevertheless, the availability and scope of this launch may not as be broad as we've seen with other Ryzen processors. AMD has a history of launching retailer exclusive SKUs, such as the 5600X3D and the 7500F, which is technically an OEM part, but as is sold in by many retailers. The most obvious reason for these exclusive deals is because of the smaller stock of such processors, often based on popular SKUs with good yields, meaning there aren't enough processors around to be cut down to these desired specs. The 7600X3D is not just a scaled-down core count, but also features lower clock rates. Uh, the Ryzen 5 uh, has a... Four, this. Uh, the Ryzen 5 7800X3D has a 4.1 gigahertz base clock and a 4.75 gigahertz boost clock, which are 100 megahertz and 300 megahertz slower than the 7800X3D, respectively. This eight core processor will be the key comparison point and it's the most popular gaming CPU right now. So another point to note is that the lower TDP is just 65 watts. The 7800X3D, 7900X3D, and the 7950X3D all have 120-watt TDPs. This will likely affect performance, possibly in a way similar to what was observed with the Ryzen 9600X and 9700X compared to their higher TDP processors. Overall, according to PCGH, testing the 7600X3D is faster then the 7900X3D, 9700X, and even the 5800X3D in games. However, they found it to be slightly slower than the 13600K and the 14600K, which are both cheaper processors, 290 and 250 respectively. Keep in mind, though, that the performance difference is minimal and can easily change depending on the platform. Uh, uh, depending on if, if you're using either DDR4 or DDR5. Also note that the 7600X3D doesn't support traditional overclocking, so you won't be able to boost its performance further. That most likely means PBO. That would be my guess. But anyway, if you look here at this graph, what you're seeing here is overall, they tested all these games, Baldur's Gate 3, F1 24, Forza Motorsport, Ghost of Tsushima, Horizon Forbidden West, Lords of the Fallen, Starfield, Anno 1800, and Cyberpunk 2770. Or 2077. They tested all those. Um, and it looks like the Ryzen 7600 X3D is about 
6% slower than the 7800X3D. So it's not too bad in terms of speed. But I'm guessing the um, efficiency is going to be something else because it's only a 65-watt CPU. So my guess is, and I think this article is probably going to confirm as I continue on, that performance-wise, it's not too bad. It's the most efficient, power-efficient chip you can get right now. It's just dog shit in price. Let's continue on here. Uh, a major advantage of the 7600X3D is showcased in its power consumption metrics. Yeah, it ranks as the second best processor in terms of power sub consumption. Okay, only the second best. I thought it would be the, mo the most power efficient. Okay, second the best. That ain't too bad. And, oh, right here. Power consumption in games tested across 10 games. So you're, you're getting the maximum frame rate at the, high, at, the, at the lowest wattage possible. And it's the most power efficient processor in applications. So the CPU reportedly consumes just 48 to 55 watts on average. And that said, it delivers the highest FPS per watt across the entire line. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, they, they concluded that the 78, that 7600X3D is a winner in terms of efficiency, but it fails to impress when it comes to price. Of course, it's dog shit on price, as the fine, upstanding folks in tech, <laughs> tech power up 3D, tech power ups uh, forums have uh, adverbially demonstrated with their uh, uh, commentary. But that's not all. That's not all on the AMD front. This is from WCCF Tech. AMD preps the replacement of Agisa with OpenSIL starting next gen Zen 6 Ryzen and Epic families. This is a more this is about their open source uh, BIOS replacement. Uh, AMD has revealed plans to implement OpenSIL, open source firmware into the next gen Zen 6 Ryzen and Epic CPUs for better transparency, security and development. AMD's OpenSIL project announced way back well, what, what a year ago? Yeah announced in 2023, is now in good shape and looks to be on time for AMD's future processors. At the Open Source Firmware Conference in Germany, the company revealed its progress on the Open Soap project, indicating that the firmware will be ready for production within the fiscal year of 2025-2026. OpenSIL was open sourced in June 2023 and is expected to completely take over AMD's Agisa and both client and server processors in the coming years. The progress of this project looks pretty much on time, and as per the slideshow AM, uh, by AMD at uh, OFSC 2024, the 6th Gen AMD Epic Venice and Rising processors based on the Zen 6 core architecture will have this firmware at the production level. Furthermore, AMD has plans for future programs as well, which will allow it to release OpenSIL code for newer platforms one quarter after the hardware is launched. As per the information in these slides, AMD has already conducted an experimental port to one of its motherboards, and with the launch of Zen 6 processors, OpenSIL will be used along with the GISA version 10 firmware initially. The Agisa will be replaced and phased out eventually by OpenSIL completely, shortly, but the Zen 6 will still rely on the pre-X86 platform security processor binaries. So it's expected that the Agisa will be phased out completely by the time Zen 7 hits the market, which will strengthen, AMD will also strengthen its support for Core Boot, which is another open source firmware project and will also make more contributions to Titiano core and with the transition to open source firmware the dependency on AMD's proprietary code will be reduced uh, 
And with community involvement, there'll be more transparency and more collaboration. We will get to see what's actually inside the code and see what's going on under the hood. Not only this will enhance overall transparency, innovations, and security for AMD next-gen CPUs, but it could also lead to other hardware manufacturers adopting to open source firmware in the, firmware in the future. At the moment, AMD is active in the development of uh, various projects, including open, uh, sound open firmware, secure encrypted virtual agent firmware, and open BMC, baseboard management controller software. So yeah, we're going, we're getting a replacement to a GISA eventually. This is their uh, update with open source firmware. But until then, we've got this here. Gigabyte releases a BIOS update uh, that uh, gives you, and also Asus done the same thing. Uh, MSI, I think MSI followed suit. So this is this is a given across all AM5 motherboards right now. Gigabyte releases BIOS. I'm singling out gig, uh, Gigabyte for a reason here. Uh, they released a BIOS with a little one-size-fits-all little toggle switch to switch between 65 watts and 105 watts TDP for the Ryzen 9700X and 9600X. And uh, right here, yep. Gigabyte Technology, a leading manufacturer of motherboards, graphics cards, yada, 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 has announced, the re uh, uh, has announced today the latest BIOS release. This is a beta BIOS, by the way, to, in to include TDP to 105 watts option and for AMD, for the AMD 9700X and 9600X processors. This can boost CPU performance up 13%. The September beta BIOS version, Agisa 1201A, provides a new option enabling users to raise the CPU TDP from 65 watts to 105 watts with just one click for the 96X, 9600X, and 9700X on Gigabyte 600 series motherboards. This new BIOS has been verified to show an approximately 13% multi-core performance boost compared to the default TDP of 65 watts. Uh, users can download if you have any of these motherboards among the x670 models and the b650 and b650e models you can uh, download this bios now but i'm going to warn you about something first uh let's see uh let me show you the warning because the, the bios is stable i've got it installed in edna which is my all white build using this motherboard right here, the B650E Aorus Elite X-Ice, uh, XX-Ice, I should say. Boy, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> uh, I did install this, uh, I did update to this BIOS, and uh, it ruins this. It kind of ruins the UC BIOS interface, specifically on this board. Now, if you notice, when Gigabyte first launched, their UC BIOS. They issued this press release showing you the, uh, as you enter the UC BIOS, you you know, the, the dynamic user interface. This is some of the interfaces you'll get depending on the board model you have. Now, this is what this BIOS is supposed to look like on ICE models. You're supposed to have this white theme. If you've got an aero board, you should get this silver theme, silver and white scan with a turquoise underline. Now for my, for Edna here, I should have this theme right here, which is the white and orange accent color and with a little bit of gray. And this is what I should have on my, uh, on Edna right now. But unfortunately when I upgraded and updated to this BIOS, I got this instead. And it's really hard on my eyes. So I wanted to give you that warning. If you have a ICE branded board among those listed in this list, like the Elite X ICE, uh, the Stealth ICE, um, the B650 non-E ICE, uh, Elite X ICE, and the uh, B650 M X ICE, if you have an ICE line, uh, of any of these bo uh, boards, 
be careful. You're going to end up with this interface and your, uh, the white theme will disappear. And hopefully this, see, this is, this, it's infuriating to me because this should never have gotten past alpha space, alpha stage. When I saw this, I was like, what the, f I, I'm, 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 leg I'm still legitimately pissed about it. Uh, because this is an integral part of their sales. It's part of their marketing right here, as this website shows you. And then they break it. On top of Secure Boot, this is stuff that you should catch at the alpha stage, not at the beta stage, for crying out loud. I, I couldn't, I could not, I could not traffic and results like these without getting wrote up or fired. I'm 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 just speaking plainly. <sighs> what a god <laughs> what a freaking mess. So I just wanted to give you that warning. I'm probably <sighs> I'm probably going to flash I don't know yet. I can live with it now because I'm hardly ever in my BIOS that much. I'm only there just to flash and upgrade and, and be done with it, restore my undervolt and uh, do a little tweaking and then I'm out of there. But it's just, even this website, even this, I don't, if you notice all my websites, every, everything I, every, everywhere I look here on, uh, on Tagonzo Media when I'm doing a side by side with my browser, a lot of it is white text. White text, or I mean black text on a white background. It's because my eyes. Uh, I I don't do the uh, black back background stuff. It just hurts my eyes so bad. So now when I go when I went into this BIOS and I saw that interface, I'm like, oh my god. And I just wanted to hurry up and restore my undervolt and get my settings tweaked and save an exit and get out of there and get back. <laughs> just oh, just so pissed off about it. <sighs> Anyway, that's it for today. <laughs> like and subscribe to Gonzo Media. We'll see you in the next one. Holy crap, 17-minute video. <laughs>